Hello everybody, Leo from the Sound for More channel here. Welcome back. Today we are uh, um, going to give you a presentation on recording and how you can do editing inside a track, of course, for Korg Gadget version 3. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you again. So, we are inside Korg Gadget, and we go up here on this icon, click on it, select New, and then click OK. So we create a new project. As you know, creating a new project gives you this screen where you can select a project. So, we just select this first one, London. It's a really heavily used, at least for myself and a lot of other users. It's a hypersonic uh, PCM drum, so based on sample. So we click here so that we load that gadget as a first track. So you can go inside the track, click in here. As you can see, we are inside uh, the track one for the London gadget. And if I exit, we're clicking on the back button. You can also click down here on the picture of the gadget and you still go inside the track. Okay, you know it's track one for the London gadget as it's written up here. Now, you, in this case, you don't see the gadget. You might be seeing it. The way to switch the gadget panel on and off is through this icon. So you click on here, similar to what you do outside the track when you show um, or you hide the panel underneath for the console. So in this case, we can see the uh, London gadget panel. And if we click again on it, it will disappear. Okay, I'm not going to go through the um, the gadget itself. I will cover that in another tutorial. But it's fair to say this is a drum machine, so we have some pads here, but... which represents, of course, samples. And here you have a drum kit which is selected. I'm going to leave that one which is bet on it. Of course, if you see this um, panel it means you are in this gadget view but there is also an effect view and also a play view so in just in case you didn't see the uh, the same view is because you need to have uh, the gadget view enabled when the uh, gadget panel is on okay so click to um, minimize that and here we are inside the track so at the top you see highlighted in yellow it says one bar so by default you have only one bar which is fine. You also have here the option on the left hand side to be in select mode to select notes, uh, or you can be in draw mode to actually draw some notes. Okay. And um, down here, you have selectors here, left and right, left here and right with these flags. And that is to establish effectively the loop, the plane loop. And then you see here divisions for your bar, one bar, first division, one bar, first bit, second, third, and fourth. And then the, and the division underneath, in this case, into four parts, depends on the grid division that is selected. And it's very simple. You click down here on the function, and then here it gives you this option where it says grid, and then you can change the grid. 16th, eighth, quarter. So in this case, you have no subdivision because you have uh, four a quarter for uh, um, each bar, or you can go by eighth, so you have eighth division, sixteenth. Okay, so that's um, that's uh, quite nice. Um, click again on the function here to make that menu disappear. Um, you can increase the number of bars here, click on the plus sign, and you can see at the top it says two bars, so you have two bars, and you can move from one to the other, clicking on the second one, so you alight the second one. Or you can use your finger, uh, hold on the on the first bar, click the second, then you highlight both of them. In this case, you see two bars. And of course, the view, the view has changed in terms of zoom. Of course, you can go back, clicking on the first bar, and um, of course, you select only that one. Okay, so that is a nice, easy to actually, an easy way to actually move across uh, different bars. Of course, you can have more than two bars, 16, etc. Um, so we are in draw mode, and on the left hand side here you see names of the sample, which corresponds to the pad. So you can click on them to, of course, sample them. It's a pity that it doesn't highlight it when you actually click on it to sample it, but hopefully in the future. Now, if you are in draw mode, you can click anywhere. And it will sample the note um, that um, where you are creating a particular step or you are want that note to be played. So in this case, here, 
on this third subdivision, we want the FX alert sample to play. Now you can click and um, hold, you can move it up and down, left and right. As you move it to between rows, we will play the sample again. But of course, uh, horizontally, it doesn't. Okay. Um, yeah, you can go also in select mode. Now, when you're in select mode, as soon as you click on one node, you have a number of options underneath. One to delete, as you can see, delete. One is to uh, copy. And um, let me actually add a couple more nodes. Like so. Let's go back to select mode. And let's uh, select like so. Click and hold. You can have also lasso option. Like so, we select those two nodes. You can still delete them. You can still uh, copy them. So you click on copy. It says copied. Then you click outside to remove the selection. Then outside, click and hold. Then it comes up with paste, selecting. Then it will paste um, what you copied there on that particular um, uh, position of steps. Okay. Um, you can also duplicate. So you can click duplicate um, like, like so. It is highlighted and then you can move them like so and then release and you have duplicated. You can select all and then of course delete everything that is selected. So it's a nice way to manage of course your notes. Back in draw mode you can also uh, if you click and hold at the end you can also change the duration like so right which um, which is nice again you can move them as you prefer okay i should have said also here that when you have a note selected in select mode you have the option here to adjust velocity with the plus and minus um button now other things that you can do you can see um at the moment i removed that note but if i have a note here you can see underneath this symbol here and that correspond to the velocity i will explain that later on but it's effectively what velocity is associated to that particular note and indeed if um um if you click down here on the velocity uh, you can see other option of course that you can bring up level pan etc etc here you see a graph which of course you can change based on different events and this is where you can um later on uh, do of course uh, um subdivision okay now you click outside and uh, on the between uh, this uh, the, the top header and the expanded view from velocity you click here to actually minimize a particular view now let's add some more notes like so okay let's click on the function here it gives you additional option you can clear all the notes like as so okay you might not want to do that depends what you're after and of course um, there you are let's create a few more notes and um, let's go back to the function we can clear the automation as well and um, if of course you have created some automation you can copy if you click on copy it asks you to select the source we have two bars on the first one then it asks you to select the destination on the second one and now if i go to the second bar i have copied them or if i select them as i explained earlier you can see they are a perfect copy of each other okay back again to the function here Here's where you can change uh, the bar. You can increase the number of bar or decrease them. Okay. And, or you can set the number of bar 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. So 16 bars, you can see they all created uh, two bars. And there you are. Now, one important thing um, to notice is at the moment, the second bar is equal to the first bar. So let's go back to the function. And let's say that I remove the second bar. Now, let's say that I add it back again. If I go to the second bar here, it's still there. So it's not destructive in terms of steps or a MIDI event. So that's important. You can change the play mode from loop and one shot. You can mute the track if uh, it is playing. So if I click down here, then I, I can mute it so you don't see. Okay. Perfect. And then you can change the grid as I mentioned uh, um, previously. Now you can see at the bottom different events for velocity for corresponding to the beginning of each note. You can still have option for recording, stopping, playing, the loop. Here you can set the tempo 
um, swing, tapping, and metronome. But you have an additional option here for quantization, of course, which is uh, um, nice. So when uh, quantization is not on, and I'm creating a note, you can see uh, it doesn't quantize to the subdivision when it is on. You see, it's quantized, which is quite nice. You can solo the truck, you can mute the truck. And this is the, the only place that I'm aware of in Code Gadget where it gives you an option for undo. So, and you can click undo, and then you also have a redo op re option as well. Okay. So that is in a nutshell how you um, add uh, notes using your mouse. Of course, you can do also real time recording if you have a, an external. MIDI controller connected to it, and then when you are recording, of course, all the notes uh, will appear on um, on your tracks inside your bars. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I hope you found the tutorial useful.